a waste of time. Yesterday, uh, we were blessed once again by Muruti uh, on the power of choice. Thank you once again, Muruti Weta Simankane. God's people are waiting. May God be with you once again. Welcome, Muruti. Please bless us. Amen. Thank you very much, Tavo, and thank you, Glenda, for that prayer. I greet you, beloved sons and daughters of the living God, in the wonderful name of our Lord, our brother, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is a great honor to join you once again this morning. It reminds me of Jesus getting up, rising early in the morning, or even spending all night in prayer. Uh, this is a wonderful habit, and it's good to do so communally together. I wish to traverse the territory that we have covered so far, just as a way to jog our memory. Uh, we have really been covering themes from the Lord's Prayer, and we began with uh, the theme of God's fatherhood in our lives, that he is our father. And as father, he has adopted us as his children, as his sons and daughters. And so we are sons and daughters of the living God, of the creator, sons and daughters of the almighty. And it is in this context that we then understand the Lord's prayer. Because if he is our father, when we, when we say, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that speaks to God's purpose. That speaks to our father's purpose. That speaks to the family's purpose. And we as children advance the purposes of the family. And this is why we looked at Esther, adopted by Mordecai. And as family, she received counsel from Mordecai. Mordecai gives a counsel that is able to fortify her spirit, give her courage to act in a way that otherwise she may have been rather too timid to do. But after Mordecai's encouragement, after his wisdom, look at Esther. She says, if I die, I die. I shall go to the king. She says, pray for me. Ask my brothers and sisters to fast for me and we will do the same here and I shall do what the Lord requires of me. That, beloved, is purpose. And as children of God, I want to pray that all of us in the family of God would appreciate the purposes of our father, the purposes. He is the king and the, therefore the purposes of his kingdom. And as his children, the advancement of his kingdom is the advancement of that which is also within our hearts. But we also saw that it is purpose and provision. The, 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 the prayer says, give us this day our daily bread but if he is our father that is not a, a person begging that is not someone on the street begging a stranger if we are his children then we come as children to the table just like Mephibosheth was invited by King David to say come and sit at the table you shall live as a child in this house as a son in this house with the privileges with the provisions that a child enjoys in the king's palace and so we too when we say give us this day our daily bread are not begging our father we are simply sitting at the table at the king's table at the table in our household and understanding that the father has a duty to care for his children and we say give us this day our daily bread and having understood this uh, we also understand that beloved uh, that um, the will of God is therefore important. And when we move away from that will, it affects a relationship. It affects a relationship. Relationships can be torn apart. And so then we understand the importance of, uh, of what sin is because sin really severs relationships. It brings tensions in relationships, distance in relationships. And that is the territory we are covering here uh, today. And that's what we covered yesterday as well. Beloved, uh, we want to this morning dwell upon the promise of God for forgiveness. For when we have sinned, the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. 
And I want us to look at how he does so. Romans chapter 5 verse 19 says, For just as through the disobedience of one man, uh, Adam, uh, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. And to this I say, Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all have been made alive. Beloved, we have already looked briefly in the history of the, uh, of the children of God when he establishes through Abraham a family. And, and, and through that family, we begin to understand the will of God for the human family. And we saw yesterday uh, that while God blesses us, while God blesses us, he also gives us purpose. And he also gives us a birthright attached to purpose so that the Father's will is done in our lives. And so we have a birthright, and that birthright speaks to what we must do as his children, as his sons, and as his daughters. Uh, we, 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 we understood that the birthright that was given to Adam uh, could be revoked, it could be sold, it could be forfeited, just as we so illustrated in Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and, 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 and the rest of the family in that lineage, there was a birthright that could be forfeited. And we saw with Esau that he desired a blessing, but despised the birthright. The birthright had to do with what he would take on as a responsibility with the passing of his father Isaac. And yet he desired only the blessings and the provisions. And we saw that that is misplaced within the family. We should not just pray for provisions. We must also pray for the purpose of God to be fulfilled in our lives. And that means taking up responsibility. When we fail to do that, we sabotage. When we fail to do that, we distance ourselves from the father. And Adam and Jesus Christ become two contrasting examples of this. For Jesus Christ traverses the same territory that Adam traversed, but he conquers. Adam is the son of God and Jesus comes and is the son of God. He, Jesus, conquers where Adam fell. Jesus becomes, as it were, the second Adam. This is what we find in the New Testament. That Jesus is in, indeed the second Adam. And it is because he is the second Adam that we find grace in our lives. For in Adam we fall, but in Jesus we rise. And I want to go along those thoughts. Keep Adam and keep Jesus in your mind as we go through this message. The remedy you see for the predicament Adam got us into is Jesus Christ. When Adam lost, what Adam lost, Christ redeems. Where Adam fell, Christ rose. In Adam all die, in Christ we are made alive. Through Adam came sin and through Christ came righteousness. Because of Adam, since Adam, through Adam, what we are is established. Sinners in need of grace. None of us can escape our predicament. None of us are, uh, as it were, separate from the human family in Adam, we are made a part of the problem. But thank God because of Jesus, for since Jesus and through Jesus, we are established in Jesus. What we are in him is established. We are sons and daughters of the living God. Forgiven, we are sons and daughters of the living God. Now, one of the far-reaching consequences of Adam's choice is that all of his children, the entire human family has fallen with him. All have sinned, the Bible says, and fallen short of the glory of God. And sometimes we forget it and think we are better than others, don't we? We uh, hear the gospel message, we accept it, and because we uh, accept it, sometimes we feel better than those that have not accepted it. In a sense, we feel that we are part of a different category. We uh, feel better as, as if we are better sinners than others. I want to simply remind us that what we are is established. 
and I, I will give an illustration. A man was sitting on, the, on, on a plane waiting for other passengers to come on board. It was another routine flight until he beheld with his own eyes, his own mortal eyes, the glory of the Lord's creation. It was a woman walking on the aisle, more beautiful than he could have ever appreciated. It was as though time could stand still for him to appreciate a little longer that which his mortal eyes were privileged to gaze upon. Some people, beloved, are beautiful. Some people seem to be an exact uh, uh, a replica of what what God designed. Some people, when you look at them, they, they are evidence of God's precision, evidence of God's finesse, of God's creative juices. And he looks upon this woman and he begins to salivate and wishes, oh, if only she could come next to me. But uh, uh, here she is walking, looking for her seat, seat 7B, 8C, 10D. And as luck would have it, would you get Guess where she sits on 18A, right next to this man. He is, uh, he can't believe his luck and he prepares his mind and prepares his tongue and smooth were his words and the conversation that ensued was 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 beautiful as the flight ascended uh, so also did this new budding relationship in the middle of the laughter and the smiles came the rhetorical question where have you been all my life it, it felt as if there was a kindred spirit it felt as if there was uh, something here a spark and a fire uh, feeling like he had um, hit the jackpot the man made a proposal and he says to this woman, pray tell when we arrive, could you spend one night with me? Just one night. Uh, now he had just messed up. What he did not know is that this lady was a Christian and he had just blown it. The laughter turned into silence. And after a while, realizing that he had really messed up what was a great opportunity, he said, how will I get back? How will I rise again? How will I find a foot back in? And uh, he then comes to the lady and uh, tries to make amend. And he says, pray tell if for that one night, just one night, I give you a million dollars. What do you think she said? What should she say? She looks at him and she declines, makes the pastor proud. A woman who understood her worth, who understood her value, who understood her principles, stood her ground, no matter how enticing it was. But as the flight went on, she began to think and she thought about her mother in hospital and the accumulating hospital bills. She thought about her university fees and she thought about how far this million dollars could go. And this was not a million rands. It was not a million pula. It was not a million zim dollars. This was a million US dollars. And then she also thought, you know, beyond those necessities and those great expenses, it would be nice, you know, to be able to get that dress that I want, that perfume that I want, that wig that I would like to have. It would be nice to get a, the latest phone. It would be nice to get some of the luxuries, a million dollars. What else could I do with a million dollars? And soon she also began to salivate. <laughs> And later, she, she then comes to the gentleman and says, by the way, about that million dollars, were you serious? To which the gentleman, of course, yes, of course, yes, I was. And uh, the lady then says, name the place, name the time, and I will be there. Name the place, name the time, I will be there. When the pilot makes the announcement, prepare to land, the gentleman begins to sweat, his palms are sweating, he's fidgeting, he does not know where to put his left foot over his right foot. And lady frantically and uh, says to her, by the way, about that million dollars, I don't have a million dollars. And when he looks at her heart sinks, he says, but, but, but I do have 150. 
rants, <laughs> to which she responds with disgust in her heart expressed on her face, what do you think I am? To which the gentleman swiftly looks back and says, well, lady, what you are is established. All we are doing now is negotiating the prize. What you are is established. All we are doing now is negotiating the price. Will it be a million dollars? Will it be a hundred? Will it be rands? Will it be zim dollars? Will it be what you are is established. We've, we are beyond that point. All we are doing now is negotiating the price. Beloved, I simply want to remind us what we are is established. When you look at the story of Adam, we could not escape. All of us, his children, what we are is established. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the, for through one man all died. Death came, sin came. All of us are tainted. David says, in sin was I shapen in iniquity. There is none that has escaped this predicament. And so all of us, beloved, what we are is established. In economics, they say, everyone has a price in military terms they say everyone has a breaking point and unfortunately us in the christian church play games and we think that it is an issue of price we feel better for we have a higher threshold a higher breaking point we take longer to fall into sin we don't sin as easily as others while others may sell their birthright for a bowl of soup we will sell ours for a diamond right while others will sell their birthright for a fruit on a tree look at adam how could Adam do such a thing? We would rather do so when we are at our wit's end, when we are desperate, when there is no way out. It will take heaven and hell, but we, we, we fall only at the extremities when uh, my wife could not give me what I desired when she has been sick for 10 years. We have excuses, but it is only when we have explanations. Beloved, it doesn't matter what your explanation is, whether you break at a million, whether you break at a hundred, whether you break with dollars, whether you break, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what you are is established. We are sinners and all of us are the same in that category. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. We are all similarly equally in need of the grace of Jesus Christ. How do we solve this predicament, beloved? For the wages of sin is death. How do we solve this predicament? We cannot solve it. For the price is too high. We cannot pay the price for this sin. We cannot pay the price for our redemption. We cannot afford to redeem ourselves. The price we do not have, we don't have the resources to redeem. And so uh, we find ourselves realizing that only God can save us. Only God can help us. Only God can redeem us. But it is only humanity that should pay the price for it is humanity that sin. Justice demands that only humanity must pay the price. So God has a predicament. Only God can pay. Only he has the resources. Only he has the righteousness. Only he has the wherewithal. Only he has the resources to redeem. But though he can do it, only men should do it. For it is not God that sinned. It is not an angel. It is a human being. And so humanity must be the one paying the price. How will God solve this dilemma? Oh, beloved, this is where Jesus comes for only God can pay the price and so God becomes man uh, only man should pay the price and so God indeed becomes man he pays the price he is God but as man he is fitting to pay the price and because of Jesus Christ we have the solution in one person his name is Jesus angels were not fit to do it God as it were was not fit to do it he had to become man and as God man he was fit and he was able to do it oh beloved he came older than his mother in time equal than his father in eternity no earthly father no heavenly mother Jesus son of David born of a virgin, fully God and fully man. His name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. Now he can pay the price and he will pay it as a human being. And he demands, he meets the demands of justice. The second person of the Godhead becomes the second Adam. Uh, we find, in fact, that he is the second Adam, lived a righteous life, connected with his father, obedient to his father, traversed the territory where Adam failed. And he's 
succeeds, uh, hungry in the wilderness, but he would not turn the stones into bread. He would uh, not jump from the temple. He would not negotiate with the devil. Get thee behind me, Satan. Tempted and tried, but came out preaching, came out healing, came out teaching, came out praying. He walked on water, raised the dead, and when it was time for him to die, when it was time for him to pay the price for your sin and for my sin, he set his face as a flint towards the cross. Oh, how I love that old cross, because that cross was the second tree. You see, the first tree is where Adam fell, but the second tree is where Jesus was lifted up, and he says, and if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. At the first tree, sin entered the world. At the second tree, sin was forgiven. At the first tree, Adam was deceived. At the second tree, the deceiver was cast out, driven out, defeated, disarmed, and rendered toothless. That pretender, that accuser of the brethren will always point to our sin. But as we look to that second tree, we can sing Jesus paid it all and all to him we owe. Sin had left the crimson stain, it is true, but he washed it white as snow. In Adam all die, but in Christ all live. In Christ we are established, beloved. We are the children of God. In Christ we are established. We are forgiven. In Christ we are free. In Christ we are holy. In Christ we are established. What you are is established. You may have doubts today. But the first Adam brought a predicament and we had no choice in it. But beloved, the second Adam has brought us salvation full and free. And in Christ, what we are is established, the children of God. And as the children of God, beloved, let us live our days under the sun with the privileges, with the provisions, with the cover of the family of God and of our Father in heaven. Just as we were in Adam, now we are in Christ, in Christ. And tomorrow, I want us to look at what happens when we are in Christ. Let us hold, uh, let us close our eyes as we pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ, our solution. We thank you for Jesus Christ, for in Adam all die, but in Jesus we live. We thank you for Jesus, the second Adam, where we find our salvation, where we find redemption for our souls, where we find that everything that we had lost as a birthright in Jesus, it is restored. We thank you, dear Father, for the person of Jesus Christ. And today we ask that he may reside in our hearts. For this we ask in his name. Let the church say, Amen. Amen.